Hello, my name is Ann Williams and I'll be reading from Fahrenheit 451. Montag, Granger took Montag's shoulder firmly. Walk carefully, guard your health. If anything should happen to Harris, you are the book of Ecclesiastes. See how important you've become in the last minute? But I've forgotten. No, nothing's ever lost. We have ways to shake down your clinkers for you. But I've tried to remember. Don't try, it'll come when you need it. All of us have photographic memories, but spend a lifetime learning how to block off the things that are really in there. Simmons here has worked on it for 20 years, and now we've got the method down to where we can recall anything that's been read once. Would you like someday, Montag, to read Plato's Republic? Of course, I am Plato's Republic. I like to read Marcus Aurelius? Mr. Simmons is Marcus. How do you do, said Mr. Simmons. Hello, said Montag. I want you to meet Jonathan Swift, the author of that evil political book, Gulliver's Travels. And this other fellow is Charles Darwin. And this one is Schopenhauer. And this one is Einstein. And this one here at my elbow is Mr. Albert Schweitzer, a very kind philosopher indeed. Here we all are, Montag, Aristophanes, and Mahatma Gandhi, and Gautama Bauda, Buddha, and Confucius, and Thomas Love Peacock, and Thomas Jefferson, and Mr. Lincoln, if you please. We are also Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Everyone laughed quietly. It can't be, said Montag. It is, replied Granger, smiling. We're book burners, too. We read the books and burn them, afraid they'd be found. Microfilming didn't pay off. We were always traveling. We didn't want to bury the film and come back later. Always the chance of discovery. Better to keep it in the old heads where no one can see it or suspect it. We are all bits and pieces of history and literature and international law, Byron, Tom Paine, Machiavelli, or Christ. It's here. And the hour's late, and the war's begun, and we are out here, and the city is there, all wrapped up in its own coat of a thousand colors. What do you think, Montag? I think I was blind trying to go at things my way, planting books in firemen's houses and sending in alarms. You did what you had to do. Carried out on a national scale, it might have worked beautifully. But our way is simpler, and we think better. All we want to do is keep the knowledge we think we will need intact and safe. We're not out to incite or anger anyone yet. For if we are destroyed, the knowledge is dead, perhaps for good. We are model citizens in our own special way. We walk the old tracks, we lie in the hills at night, and the city people let us be. We stopped and searched occasionally, but there's nothing on our persons to incriminate us. The organization is flexible, very loose and fragmentary. Some of us have had plastic surgery on our faces and fingerprints. Right now we have a horrible job. We're waiting for the war to begin and as quickly end. It's not pleasant, but when we're not in control, we're the odd minority crying in the wilderness. When the war is over, perhaps we can be of some use in the world. Do you really think they'll listen then? If not, we'll just have to wait. We'll pass the books on to our children by word of mouth and let our children wait. In turn, on the other people. A lot will be lost that way, of course, but you can't make people listen. They have to come around in their own time wondering what happened and why the world blew up under them. It can't last.